Greetings. Welcome to our online Bible study uh, from the Bartlett Woods Church of Christ. I'm Stan Phipps, and I'll be teaching uh, from Exodus today. We've been having a study from Exodus, and Lord willing, we will finish it today. We started way back there in February, and today we're going to look at uh, chapter 40, Lord willing. Now, last week we looked at chapter 39, and uh, the Israelites were building or constructing uh, different uh, parts of the tabernacle, and in chapter 39, they had gotten to constructing the priestly garments, which would be the ephod and the breast piece and the other uh, priestly garments like uh, the tunic and the undergarments and the sashes and the turbans and the headpieces and all. And so each time one of these were said to have been completed, we see the message, they did it as the Lord commanded Moses. And so that's what we looked at last week. Today, Lord willing, chapter 40 is going to be about actually setting up the tabernacle after it's constructed. Uh, in chapter 39, we, we saw that Moses had inspected it, uh, all that was done, uh, everything that was done, and found that it was done well, and he blessed them for it. And so now he's about to set up uh, the tabernacle. And then the Lord will see at the last part of this book, the last part of this chapter, that the Lord will visit uh, the tabernacle and his glory would come down upon it. So I'm looking forward to a great study today. Uh, before we go any further, let's go to God in prayer. Father, we're so thankful for... Uh, this book that you have given to us, your word, and we're so thankful, Father, we could study from Exodus all these uh, many weeks. I pray, Father, that you will bless our study today. Help us, Father, to understand uh, your will for us. Help us, Father, to, to see your greatness and your wisdom and the great love and concern that you have for us and, and all your people. Thank you, Father. Uh, for this audience, and I pray, Father, that you continue to bless them as they're trying, striving, Father, to learn more about you and, and your will uh, for their lives. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, let's look at chapter uh, 40, uh, verses 1 through 8. Then the Lord said to Moses, Set up the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, on the first day of the first month. Place the ark of the testimony in it and shield the ark with the curtain. Bring in the table and set out what belongs on it. Then bring in the lampstand and set up its lamps. Place the gold altar of the incense in front of the ark of testimony and put the curtain at the entrance to the tabernacle. Place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting. Place the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and put water in it. Set up the courtyard around it and put the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. So we see God has a plan for how he wants these articles and materials to be constructed. He also has a plan on uh, when and where they are uh, to be uh, set up. I think it's something that we really need to pay attention to. That God has a will and we need to follow that will. So we see that he said to set up the tent of meeting. Now, we've seen two different tent of meetings. There was a tent of meeting that Moses had uh, out away from the people and, and away from the area where the tabernacle would be constructed. And this was, was very temporary, and this is where Moses would go in. And we found out about this in chapter 33. Moses would go in and, and communicate with God. And uh, it was... Uh, Joshua that would protect uh, that tent of meeting and we, we also looked at there were even some ladies that may have been responsible for for tending to any needs uh, uh, for that tent of meeting, cleaning it up or provision or anything and so uh, now that tent of meeting is going to uh, become uh, the tabernacle and that's where God would meet with his people. He was told to start this construction uh, excuse me, start this putting it together in uh, on the first day of the first month, okay? And apparently, most all scholars think that, 
that this, uh, this tabernacle was put up in one day's time. And you're going to see that Moses did this and Moses did that. I kind of wonder if he didn't have help, but of course he would have been the supervisor. He would have been the one that uh, ensured that it was done uh, the way that Moses wanted it done. Now, we can kind of figure out how uh, the some time frame there and, and how long it took to to construct the tabernacle and that they were, uh, Mo, I think Moses was supposed to to put that tabernacle up on the first day of the fun, uh, first month of their second year. Uh, we know that they reached Mount Sinai on the third month uh, to the day and from Exodus chapter 19 verse 1. And you think about Moses being on Mount Sinai for 40 days on two different occasions. So you can look at 90 days plus 80 days equals 170 days. So what we're uh, looking at is uh, they built the tabernacle. They constructed it in about six months' time. That's, uh, that's pretty, pretty quick to me, pretty fast, pretty, pretty good work. And so uh, the, the, most of the uh, commentator scholars think that the tabernacle was actually put up in one day and he was told to place the ark of the testimony and that would be the ark of the covenant and shield the ark with the curtain so first things first he moved the ark of the covenant or ark of the testimony in and then he put that uh, curtain up and that made uh, the uh, the holy of holy place here we saw in verses four and five god told him to bring in uh, the table and set it uh, in uh, the room next to the Holy of Holy Place and then bring in the lampstand and then bring in uh, the golden altar and he was, he was to set that golden altar right in front of the curtain uh, that uh, would separate uh, the holy from uh, the most holy place. And so then in verse 6 he was to, to place the altar of burnt offering in front of the entrance to the tabernacle okay uh the tent of meeting and place the this this is him working on the outside now the altar of burnt offering was the bronze altar he was supposed to put it outside of that tent of meeting and uh, place it there and uh, close to the door uh, close to the curtain he placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar and it was to put water in it and then he was to set up the courtyard around it. These are directions from God. So now let's uh, read verses 9 through 11. And he says, this is God and what he wants. He says, take the anointing oil and anoint the tabernacle and everything in it. Consecrate it and all its furnishings and it will be holy. Then anoint the altar of burnt offering and all its utensils. Consecrate the altar and it will be most holy. Anoint the basin and its stands and consecrate them and so he's got the the furniture moved in or the tabernacles built the curtains are put in to separate the room uh the curtains and he, uh, he's 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 giving them all of these instructions on how to do this and then he says i want you to anoint it i want you to consecrate this tabernacle and everything in it so you take the anointing oil and he tells him to what he wants you 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 consecrate uh, what's in the most holy place, that's, which would be the Ark of the Testimony, the Ark of the Covenant, and those uh, articles that are in the holy place. And then I want you to, uh, to anoint or consecrate the, the uh, uh, altar of burnt offering and uh, the basin. Just, I want it all consecrated, uh, made holy uh, for me. And so that's the instructions that God gave to uh, Moses about what to do about the tabernacle itself. And then he talks about the priest and their garments. In verses 12 through 16, bring Aaron and his sons to the entrance to the tent of meeting and wash them with water. Then dress Aaron in the sacred garments and anoint him and consecrate him so he may serve me as priest. Bring his sons and dress them in tunics. Anoint them just as you anointed their father so they may serve me as priest. Their anointing will be to a priesthood that will continue for all generations to come. So this is keep, supposed to be going right down the line as long as there is a, there is a Mosaic law, this law. Say Moses did everything just as the Lord commanded him. So he was to not only take the, the tabernacle itself and the furnishings, but he was supposed to have Aaron 
as the high priest and his sons as the priests, and they were supposed to dress up in their garments, and then they were supposed to be anointed and consecrated uh, for service uh, to God. And so, of course, 16 says Moses did it, everything just as the Lord commanded him. Okay, verses uh, 17 through 19. So the tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month in the second year. There's, a, there's another time frame uh, note there. First month, first day of the first month in the second year. When Moses set up the tabernacle, he put the bases in place, erected the frames, inserted the crossbars, and set up the post. Then he spread out the tent over the tabernacle and put the covering over the tent as the Lord commanded him. So you see that... Uh, Finally, these, these things are getting done. The tabernacle was set up on the first day of the first month of the second year. Now, we go way back there, and when we studied Exodus chapter 12, uh, just before uh, that final plague, just before uh, the Passover there, the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in Egypt, this month is to be for you the first month. The first month of your year so God was establishing right then uh, the beginning of the year that year would begin uh, just before uh, the Passover would be uh, observed so we see here that uh, Moses uh, did it and so we got to wonder if he had help or did he do it all himself uh, we're not really uh, told that but we do know that he would have supervised it. He would have been over it because he was their leader. And I can just see him. Or I couldn't see the the, the construction of the garments. Or I couldn't see the, the, the building of the tabernacle. I can see him taking it. I've, I've been camping too many times. And uh, I, I can see him getting those poles together. And I can see him getting the bases. And, and lining everything up. And putting it. Uh, put the coverings over. That That's in my mind. I can see that. And so, and we noticed that he was told uh, to build a, a tent of meeting first, and that's what he did. Uh, verses 20 through 21, he took the testimony, that would be the Ten Commandments, and placed it in the ark, attached the poles to the ark, and put the atonement cover over it. Then he brought the ark into the tabernacle and hung the shielding curtain and shielded the ark of the testimony as the Lord commanded him. So he did it. Just as God commanded, and he put the, he put the, uh, he got the Ark of the Covenant and put the, the Ten Commandments in there, and probably it doesn't mention here, but he probably put a bowl of manna in there too, because way back there, when when God gave him the manna for the first time, he was told to put a bowl of manna in there in the, in the Ark of the Covenant. So he he got the Ark of the Covenant together, put the put at, at least mainly he put the Ten Commandments in there put the, the poles through the rings put the cover the atonement cover the mercy seat on there and place it in the, the area for the holy place and then uh, hung the curtain up just as God commanded commanded okay verses 22 and 23 Moses placed the table in the tent of meeting on the north side of the tabernacle outside the curtain and set out the bread on it uh, before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. So the tabernacle faced east. And so on the north side of this holy place, uh, Moses put in the table as he was instructed by God. Now, he's, he's got a way that he wants things constructed, and then he's got God has a way in which he wants things placed, okay? And so he set the bread on it before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. Okay, verse 24 and 25, verses 24 and 25. He placed the lampstand in the tent of meeting opposite the table on the south side of the tabernacle and set up the lamps before the Lord as the Lord commanded him. So the Lord told him to put the lampstand on the opposite wall uh, of the holy place. And so he did that. And then... Uh, verses 26 through 28, Moses placed the gold altar in the tent of meeting. Uh, that gold altar would be the altar of incense. 
in front of a curtain, okay, and burned fragrant incense on it as the Lord commanded him. Then he put up the curtain at the entrance uh, to the tabernacle. So he moved in the furnishings. He brought the, the table in and, and put it on the, the north side and uh, the, the bread on it. And then he brought in the lampstand and put it on the south side. And then he brought in the gold altar, the altar of incense, and he began burning incense, and then he closed that room off uh, with a curtain. Okay, let's read verses 29. Well, just verse 29. He set the altar of burnt offering near the entrance to the tabernacle, the tent of meeting, and offered on it burnt offerings and grain offerings as the Lord commanded him. So he's finished with the tent of meeting, and so he's moved outside, and he placed... Uh, the altar of burnt offering, or as some, uh, sometimes it's referred to as the bronze offering, offering he set it uh, in front of the tent of meeting. And uh, he's already offered burnt offerings and grain offerings on it, just as the Lord commanded. So uh, verses 30 uh, through 32, he placed the basin between the tent of meeting and the altar, and put water in it for washing. And Moses and Aaron and his sons used it to wash their hands and feet. They washed whenever they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar as the Lord commanded Moses. And so he sets the, the laver, the, 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 uh, the bronze basin, as it's, it's also called, between uh, the altar of burnt offering and the tent of meeting, and he put water in it, and that was where the high priest and the priest would wash their hands and feet before the, they served the Lord, before they made an offering of, of, uh, of on the altar or before they went into the tent of meeting. And if you notice verse 31, it says, And Moses and Aaron and his sons used it to wash their hands and feet. And they did this as the Lord commanded in verse 33, then Moses set up the courtyard around the tabernacle and altar and put up the curtain at the entrance to the courtyard. And so Moses finished the work, all right? So here we go. He did it very logically, he did just like God commanded him to, but you take your, your article and say the, uh, the Ark of the Covenant and you place it in the tent just where it's supposed to go and then you put the curtain in there. And then you uh, would bring in your uh, table and, and the, the room beside it, and he, he put it on the north wall to, and put the bread on it just as it was commanded. Then he brought in the lampstand, put it on the south wall, set it up just as it was commanded. And then he brought in the altar of incense, or the golden altar, and uh, even burned the incense on it. And then he closed that curtain off, and then he started working on the courtyard, beginning with, with the altar of an offering, and then the bronze basin. And then after he did that, he got the, the, the walls of uh, the courtyard uh, put up, and, and the curtain put up. And uh, it was all finished very logically and, and exactly the way God would want it to be fixed. And so... Verses 34 and 35, the, the uh, tabernacle is finished. It's done. It's, it's made and it's, it's put up and uh, it's ready uh, for God uh, to come and visit, to be there with him, you know. And let's, let's go ahead and read verses 34 and 35. Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. Moses could not enter the tent of meeting because the cloud had settled upon it, and the glory of the Lord filled the tabernacle. That must have been some awesome, uh, beautiful sight to see that cloud uh, kind of dropping down and filling in uh, the, the tabernacle. You know, way back there in Exodus chapter uh, 25, verses 8 and 9, before it was all started, God said, have them make me a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. Make this tabernacle and all its furnishings exactly like the pattern I will show you. And that, that is uh, finally come uh, to being, to fruition. 
since way back there when Moses first met the Lord at the burning bush in chapter 3, verse 1, since way back there when Moses told Pharaoh to let, uh, that God says, to let my people go, and we've, and we've gone through the plagues and the crossing of the Red Sea and the bitter water at Merah, the manna and the quail in the wilderness, the water from the rock at Rephidim, that, that crazy battle with the Amalekites and the fiery quaking mountain and the giving of the Ten Commandments, the golden calf and the, the re-giving of the Ten Commandments, the instructions for the tabernacle and the building of the tabernacle, and now we finally see what God wanted uh, from the very beginning with Moses. He wanted uh, for a tabernacle to be built, a place to be built where he could come and dwell with the people. And how glorious uh, that moment uh, must have been. Um, you see in verses 36 through 38, and all the travels of the Israelites, whenever the cloud lifted from above the tabernacle, they would set out. But if the cloud did not lift, they did not set out until the day it lifted. So the cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day, and fire was in the cloud by night, in the sight of all the house of Israel during their uh, travels. These Israelites had seen this cloud before. It protected them at the Red Sea. It, it led them through the wilderness. Uh, they saw it again before the Lord uh, provided uh, the quail for them. They saw it, and they were afraid of it at Mount Sinai and the giving of the Ten Commandments. And then they saw it when uh, Moses had the other uh, ten of meeting, and God would be there and visit with him. And uh, it's, uh, it, here it is again in a much grander, glorious way, I guess. Um, Numbers 9 gives us a little bit more of an idea of exactly uh, what happened again. It, it gives us some details about this event. Numbers 9, starting in verse 15. On the day of the tabernacle, the tent of the testimony was set up. The cloud covered it from evening till morning. The cloud above the tabernacle looked like fire. That is how it continued to be. The cloud covered it, and at night it looked like fire. Whenever the cloud lifted from above the tent, the Israelites set out. Whenever the cloud settled, the Israelites encamped. At the Lord's command, the Israelites set out, and at his command, they encamped. As long as the cloud stayed over the tabernacle, they remained in camp. When the cloud remained over the tabernacle a long time, the Israelites obeyed the Lord's order and did not set out. Sometimes the cloud was over the tabernacle only a few days. At the Lord's command, they would encamp, and then at his command, they would set out. Sometimes the cloud stayed only from evening till morning, and when it lifted in the morning, they set out. Whether by day or by night, whenever the cloud lifted, they set out. Whether the cloud stayed over the tabernacle for two days or a month or a year, the Israelites would remain in camp and not set out. But when it lifted, they would set out. At the Lord's command, they encamped, and at the Lord's command, they set out. They obeyed the Lord's order in accordance with his command through Moses. We see now that uh, the tabernacle is finished and it's put up. God has come down and visited it. That uh, the Israelites can celebrate. They're only a few days from celebrating uh, their first Passover on the first month of the 14th day and of course the tabernacle was erected on the first day of the first month so in just a couple of weeks for them they would be celebrating uh, the passover out there in the tabernacle in the wilderness well it's been a great study and uh, that's the end of our study for today uh, if you uh, wanted to continue to study you would continue to read uh, the law of Moses, you would be looking at Leviticus, and that's uh, more of uh, the regulations and laws from God, and you would see uh, numbers and more about the activities of the Israelites as they wandered in the wilderness, and then there would be Deuteronomy, and that would be kind of the re-giving or uh, reminding this new generation of Israelites about the laws of God before they go into the promised land and Joshua is about
crossing the river and going into the promised land and they're establishing uh, their new home there. Great studies. And it's been a wonderful study since uh, way back there in February. We, we've seen uh, a lot about God and a lot about Moses. Moses was the great lawgiver uh, for the Israelites. John chapter 1, verse 17, John begins his gospel in talking about Jesus, uh, but he says the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. If you remember, Moses was at the transfiguration when Peter, James, and John were on the mountain uh, with Jesus. Uh, Moses uh, uh, died in the wilderness. He did not go and get to go into the promised land because he was disobedient uh, to God at, uh, at another water from the rock at Kadesh, Kadesh when he was told to, to speak to the rock, but he struck the rock instead in Numbers chapter 20. So he did not get to go into the promised land, but he was very uh, loved and revered by the Israelites, and uh, many times he's referred to in uh, the New Testament. Our application, or our application would have to be for the whole year. We started back in February, and we had about six weeks in a Bible class, and then about halfway through March, we've been online studying ever since. Here we are in the middle uh, of September. Um, so I, would, uh, I would like for us to think about God's providence, how God has a plan, and he, he worked that plan, and he used Moses from from uh, when he was a little baby in the, in the, in the river. And, and the uh, Pharaoh's daughter got him up out of the river and how God used him to bring uh, the Israelites out of Egyptian slavery and all the things that he did, uh, God did for his people to keep the promises that he made to Abraham and all the things that he did for God's people using a man uh, like Moses. And we see God's power and how it was displayed with the, with the false gods of Egypt and how he, uh, his provision about how he provided uh, manna in the morning, how he provided quail, how he provided water from the rock. We see God's purpose, that he has a, a reason for doing things. And, and he wanted uh, the people to worship him. He wanted to be with them. He had a pattern uh, for how to build a tabernacle and, and the, the way that the articles were to be made, what they were to be made from, and how they were to be positioned. And uh, we should uh, learn to, to know and realize that God has a purpose and to follow his pattern even today under the new law, which, which we have. It's a great book. It's been a great study. I'd like to say thanks to uh, Dale Morris and uh, George McCann for helping early in the study when we were in the classroom before we had to go online. I'd like to say thanks to uh, my wife Janelle and Jeremy Hall for all their technical support and helping me to get this class from, uh, from the notes to uh, the video and, and on to Facebook or whatever. I'd like to thank God for giving me this opportunity to teach and to, to uh, learn myself. And I'd like to thank him for his word. He's truly amazing, and his word is ama amazing. This class has been a blessing to me, and I hope that it's been a blessing to you. For now, I'd like to say uh, goodbye, and I'd like to say thanks to you for tuning in. God bless you and the study of God's Word. And uh, in the words of a great godly man who was a great mentor for me, John Simpson, I'd like to say, now you take it from here. God bless. Bye-bye.